So you may be here to re-energize yourself. You may be here to re-energize your business. You may be here to re-energize your leadership. Know that a rising tide raises all ships. The better you do, the better your customer does. The better you do, the better your team does. The better you do, the better your community does. The better you, you do, the better America does. And this is real numbers, you guys. Think about this. In the last decade, Fortune 500 companies have added a net decrease of 4 million jobs to the economy. During that same period of time, small businesses, primarily family owned, have added a net increase of 8 million jobs to the economy. You are the economy. There's 28 million small businesses in America today that account to 54% of the gross domestic product. 54% of all the goods and services and revenue produced in this economy is done by people just like you. All of the opportunity that's in front of you, all of the problems that are in front of you, all the opportunity that's behind you, all the problems that are behind you are just about all caused by leadership or a lack thereof. It's the entree leader's job to insert passion and passionate people into the organization's processes. The culture has told itself a lie and a bunch of us have believed it that if we just hired talented people with enough dots and dashes and letters and degrees on their resume that they're gonna solve our problems. Talented people that don't care are freaking worthless. I wanna get talented people that care deeply how much you care as a leader. If you're mailing it in, you know what? You can expect your team to mail it in. If you demand excellence of yourself, if you study and bring it to make yourself approved, you cause things to happen, then you have the right to look around and go, I demand excellence around me. Why? Because I care so deeply. And I tell our team every Monday morning in staff meeting, if you don't care deeply anymore, hit the door. We want people on the team that are bringing it. When your spirit leaves, for God's sake, take your body with it. When it comes to leadership, it's about variables that you and I can control. Leaders are not born. I have been to the hospital and visited my friends and relatives that have had babies, my daughters having babies, and they always come out and they go, it's a boy, it's a girl. They never say, it's a leader. Leadership is a decision, it's an intentional act like anything in winning is. It's not an accidental thing. It's choices that you make, and they're variables that you control. They're controllables that you can control. My education, your education. My character, your character. My capacity, your capacity leads you to win. These are the things that are limiting your organization. Your education, your character, your capacity, your ability, your vision are the limiting factors to your organization. Bad news is it's up to you. The good news is it's up to you. You can change your character and decide to tell the truth and be loyal and be worthy of trust, trustworthy. These are decisions you can make. You can decide to be somebody tomorrow that you're not today. You think the 32 year old Dave Ramsey that started this thing could have done this? No, he was dumber than a rock. I've moved some people into positions that thought they were ready. I didn't think they were ready, but everybody in the building but me thought they were ready. So I just looked at everybody and I said, they're not ready. You know what? I was wrong. They were ready. I like being wrong. I like being wrong when it helps a whole bunch of people, when it gives people opportunity and I get to turn around and speak vision over and go, you know what? I was wrong. You're a rock star. You're a stud. You're a stud at. John Maxwell calls this limiting factor the leadership lid. If I recall properly, my friend John wrote this in the third chapter of his book, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Now, John, he calls this the leadership lid. We're the lid on our organization. The bad news is I'm limiting my organization. The good news is those are controllable variables. If you don't have the education that makes you proud, go get it. You don't have to have a PhD in management. That's absurd. You don't need that unless you're going to teach people who aren't going to run a business. But you do need to know something about accounting if you're going to run a business. You do need to know something about leadership if you're going to run a business. You do need to know something about marketing if you're going to run a business. You do need to know something about the law if you're going to run a business. You do need to know some stuff because stupid will get you hurt. Dr. Benjamin Zander, the conductor of the Boston Philharmonic since 1979, did a TED Talk that has been absolutely a classic standard went viral. In it, he says, the conductor doesn't make a sound. He depends on his ability to make other people powerful. I heard one guy say the conductor can't do his job unless he turns his back on the crowd and faces his team. My job, he says, is to awaken possibility in other people. Speak vision 
over my team. If the eyes are shining, you know you're doing it. If they're not shining, you have to ask yourself, what am I doing that my players' eyes are not shining? What am I doing that my children's eyes are not shining? Have you ever done something as a leader where you watched the shine leave their eyes? Yeah, I've done that too. I try not to do that anymore. I'm talking about the ones that are gonna make it. As a leader, you need to understand your enterprise will never outgrow you, just what we've been talking about. So I've been studying family businesses off and on for about a decade now, trying to learn how to do our family business, trying to find best practices, and I've had some wonderful interviews with highly successful family business operations. One of them that sticks in my mind is where I got this saying from. A guy said this to me, the quirky brilliance of the founder can only take you so far. The story is, is that there were a dad who was 72 years old. I was talking to his son who was in his early 50s. and. The dad had started from scratch and grown a business that was doing a billion dollars top line. Doing a billion dollars top line. Well, the two boys, actually three sons, come on board and they start running things gradually and they do the proper kind of succession planning and transition and handoff. But at the point that the three sons were in charge and the old man was the figurehead and no longer could mess things up, he grew a billion dollar company. In two years, they took it from one billion to three billion. And I said, say what? Because a billions, that's, you could have quit there. You took it from one to three billion in two years with a B? I said, how did you do that? Well, the first thing he did was insightful. He stopped and he honored his dad. And he said, Dave, my dad had no formal education, but he is a brilliant man. Obviously, stupid people don't grow a business with a B on it, right? with a billion dollars. He said he was an incredible business guy. His business acumen grew. He read books like no one you've ever met. He constantly was learning and growing through his whole life. And he was able to do this incredible feat. And I said, so how were you able to take this incredible feat and triple it? He said, as brilliant as my dad is, he didn't know what he didn't know. He says, we all got MBAs. We brought basic business practices, processes, and systems. We didn't bring a bureaucracy in. We left the spirit, the culture, the entrepreneurial drive inside the company. But we just brought some basic cleanup to what was a lot of chaos. And there was that much low-hanging fruit. He said, Dave, in a very real sense, my dad grew a $3 billion company, but he didn't know how to do that last little push that tripled it in two years. And we brought those, that level of knowledge and sophistication in. And then he said it, the quirky brilliance of the founder can only take you so far. Now, I learned a couple of things from that. One is I learned I need to be listening to the next generation before I step aside. They can help me lift things and bring things and, and you know, I can't spell web. And so they have to show me how to do all this stuff on the internet. I gotta get out of the way of myself as a leader and let these talented people do what they do while I watch over it, because that's my job as the leader and make sure they're there. The other thing I thought about was if those guys, those sons can go and get information that the old man didn't have, why couldn't the old man go and get information that the old man didn't have? Why do I have to wait on another generation? Why can't I learn something about digital marketing while I'm still here? Why can't I learn something about leadership that I didn't know before? Why can't I learn something about systems and processes that I didn't know before to revolutionize and change my business? I can choose to not rely on my quirky brilliance. Now, there's no question I have a quirky brilliance, but if I just wait on that, then I'm, there's limiting factors. Y'all follow me, say yes. So you gotta change this thing. Organizations are never limited by their opportunity, they're limited by their leader. This is the law of the lid that we're talking about.